So you're saying that the the recruiting standards or requirements are kind of nobody really knows what they are. So now that you're, I mean, now that you're talking to the recruiter, what who what are the requirements? Uh, so there's a a psychological evaluation. You have to go do uh, a couple. I think I want to say it was two appointments, um, and it's just a psych going through all of their psych stuff, determining if you would be a good fit or not. Um, and then there's a physical test you have to do uh, in the standard, I do not remember. Um, but it was like run, pull-ups, push-ups, whatever it was, certain times and certain numbers. Um, and that all kind of goes in your file and it is sent off to the hill. And that's, uh, or like, to, so Dwyer Hill is our, our unit, call it the hill. Um, and they get all these files from all across the different branches of the military and pick the people that are going to come on selection that year. Um, okay. And then they run a few serials of that. So, so this sounds this sounds very similar to Delta. That you, they're they're recruiting from all Canadian military units. Yeah. Or branches. Yeah, like I I could have fucking been a musician for two years and then tried out <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, any any branch. Okay, so they yeah, so this is very similar to Delta. Yeah, interesting. And I think the the thought behind it is we're gonna teach you everything you need to know. Yeah, and like you don't need to be really good with a pistol because we're gonna show you the proper way to do it anyway. And if you shoot a lot, you probably have bad habits coming. <laughs> like, so I, there wasn't a big concern of where you came from. The most successful um, recruits, percentage wise, are from the infantry. Um, by like a pretty big percentage, I think. But still, you can be a Navy, whatever, cook. Okay. And still. Are there training. other levels of special operations units within the Canadian Armed Forces? or? Is yeah, yeah. JTF2? So we have uh, JTF-2 um, is kind of the counterterrorism hostage rescue mandate tier one. Uh, CSOR is like uh, almost like the Delta Ranger relationship a little bit. Okay. Um, they're the Special Operations Regiment. And then we have like um, like a Hilo group and like a, like a CBRN, like chemical weapon, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Those dudes that go to like the crazy yeah. machines. And <laughs> Do you guys shit. work with them? Yeah, yeah. We work with them all the time, like overseas and domestic and like it's... Do you see a lot of carryover from uh, the? I'm sorry, I don't. The the the, Jake, the like the Ranger relationship that you were just talking about with that other unit. Do you see a lot of draw coming from that unit into JTF too? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think even more now. I, th I I don't know if it was set up this way, but it, there's a lot of guys now that go there first. And then come to GTF too. Okay. Yeah. So you do the you do the psych test. You do the physical test. What? How's the? Do they give you like a? Hey, you're in immediately, or is it a long wait? No, you got to That's a funny one, actually. So you do. You'll know if you pass the test because you know what the times are. You know what the numbers are. And there's like a physical, like a PSP staff. they like, okay. That's your push-up number. Good. Here's your run time. Here's your pull-ups. Here's your whatever. Um, so you know if you passed physical test. I don't recall knowing if I passed the psych or if they're just like, you know, like psychs. Like, these are yeah. my notes. They're going in. Um, but you, you wait for a message from Dwyer Hill to say like, yeah, you're picked up on selection. So I was training with a group of guys to get ready for it. Um, and we were like, we were given or like, like, two or three workouts a day and like our chain of command was giving us time to do it and it was we got really good support in that sense but they were all I was already in uh recce platoon as a sniper and they were in a different uh squadron or company uh so I we were I was going out for a run morning PT and I think it was all three of them were like oh we got our message we're picked up to go on selection I was like, well, where the fuck did you find that out? And I'm like, oh, Sergeant Major just told us. So I'm like, now I'm like, well, I didn't hear fucking anything. What the hell? So I went and found my Sergeant Major. I was like, 
He's like, what do you want? <laughs> do you have anything to tell me? He's like, oh, yeah, you're going on selection. I was like, fuck. <laughs> like, thank you. And then I went and did my run or whatever. But it was just, I don't even know, it was maybe 10 minutes in between. But I was like, am I going? What's happening here? <laughs> but, yeah, so they, they send the message back to the, the, the different units. And you just get word, like, show up at this time. And that's, that's all you know. And there's, like... Again, you see, like, I, I was training in battalion with, like, fuck, some of the fittest people I've ever met in my whole life. And you'd see, they'd go on selection, come back, like, three days later. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Didn't make it. And they're like, I like, can't talk about it, but no, I didn't make it. Like, and then the next guy, what the fuck happened? And then so you're going, it's it's intimidating. Yeah. You see, like, work, I'm, I'm working out with these guys. I know they're machines. And they're just like a couple of days later coming back. I'm like, a couple of days? What Damn. happened in a couple of days? Like, so yeah, going in, it was just such a mystery, and just the the rumors that fly around. So like, is 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 the hill at the same? Is is it at the same base that you're on, or did you have to travel? You know, is it at another location? In yeah. Canada so or? I was in Edmonton, which is in Alberta. We traveled to Dwyer Hill, which is uh, near Ottawa, and that's where all the selection was run all around that area. Okay. So you get there, you get, you show up around how many people are trying out? Uh, there's a couple serials, but the serial I was on, I think was 30, just over 30 people, maybe 30 people. Yeah. How many of these are they running a year? Uh, it varies every year, depending on recruiting numbers and all this stuff. I think the year I did it. So my selection was in 2008. Uh, I want to say there's four cereals or something like that. Okay. Three or, three or four cereals. A year? Yeah, the year I was on it. So I know it varies. I think they try to get as many yeah. good candidates as possible. But um, again, recruiting numbers go like this. So I'll bet they're like this right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. But So you get in, about 30 guys. What, what do they have? How are you received? Are they welcoming? Are they uh, standoffish? No, it's fine. Are they yelling crazy. at it's, you? It's, it's psychological, like, right off the bat. So you, I flew into Ottawa the night before. They tell you where to stay in the hotel. They tell you what time to meet a bus. You just get on a bus. Like, here's your number. You'll now be referred to as this number. Go sit down. And it's not like, not really a dick. They're just like... More a matter number of fact. 10, number nine. Get on the bus. And you just like, fuck me. <laughs> like, what's going to happen? And it's kind of like that throughout. It's a seven-day selection. Um, and you just don't know. Don't know what's going to happen. Uh, there's guys that have done it a couple times. Uh, so they have a, a different clue. Or like, there's some people that knew because friends or whatever told them. But like, coming from out west, we didn't have a clue. None of us knew anything that was going to happen. Damn. So, yeah, it was... You had no ties inside the unit or anything? No. No. I had totally in the blind. In the blind. Yeah, just like hoping we prepared well enough. So what, did, what was it like? What were they looking for? Uh, the first test? It's, it's like fitness is a big part, but it almost doesn't matter. I realized this after, like the guys that were super fit that came back, like if you can do 200 push-ups, you're going to be asked to do 202. Like, it, the fitness is important because it's fucking hard, but it's more about mental resilience, I think, than actual physical fitness. Like, you pass the fitness standard to get there. Now, no matter how fit you are, you're going you're gonna to be pushed. Um, and that, that definitely happened. Uh, and then it's just like, it's like an all day, twenty four seven psychological fucking mind fuck. Oh, okay. just like in, there's all kinds of different tasks to like see how you think, uh, to see how you work in a team, see how you work under pressure, obviously, um, to test the things you're scared of. Um, how did they do that? How do they test what you're scared of? Oh, uh, man, they were just without maybe getting into exact specifics. It would be like, they will test to see if you're claustrophobic, test to see if you're 
scared of water or drowning. Test to see if you're afraid of heights. Test to see your reaction in these situations. Um, and when they yeah. find it, when they find your fear, are you going to hang out in that fear for a little while? Once oh yeah, you'll get explo you, like you are expl if you are showing something you're afraid of, it is exploited for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was yours? Um, the ones they tested, I, I didn't really have any of them at that point. I mean, I have a healthy respect for heights, uh, but I mean, like, I'm, I love the mountains and I'm a climber and stuff, but some of the most scared I've been have been on, like, trad climbs <laughs> because I, I have a respect for heights. I wouldn't say I'm scared of it, uh, but that would probably be the one where it's like, the the, the the test that they do, I was like, fucking goddamn. Like, I was like, I just have to do it. I, I just don't want to give away precisely what, it, precisely what it was. But that was the one where I was like, okay, yeah. okay. I'm like, fuck it, I'm here. Like, But that would have been the one. I'm not really, I'm not claustrophobic. I'm, we trained a lot in the water getting ready for it, so I was pretty comfortable in the water. Um yeah. So if you don't, I totally understand not wanting to give anything up, and I don't want you to do that. I'm not prying. So if you don't yeah. want to answer, just, you know, you can tell me. It's mm. fine. Everybody's going to understand. But I'm just, I'm trying to get, you know, the gist of what the selection's like. So it sounds, first it sounded like it was kind of a gentleman's course where it was just very matter-of-fact, unemotional. Oh, no. no, 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 no. So after that, then they start yelling, and they're... Oh, yeah. It, okay. it, it, you go back and forth. There's a bunch of different personalities doing different things for different reasons. So okay. like it was psychological. Some guys don't care about like welcome your number 10. Leave. Some people fucking right in your face to see if you're afraid of someone yelling at you to see if like how you handle it. And it was like just it, it was they it was a very good it was a roller coaster like and then you would have time like on your own where you'd have a task and then it was with a team and like you didn't know if when they tell you to go to sleep, if you're actually going to sleep or something's going to happen or like, it, it, it was just, it's seven days. Um, and it's like, there's not very much downtime and there's just, they try to really assess how you're going to be if shit is hard and you're yeah. tired and you have a team relying on you or you have to do something on your own. Like, Is it 24 hours a day? Is it, is it just one task to the next task? Oh, yeah, it's 24 task. hours a day. Even, even like, your task of, okay, go go to sleep. You're like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's, it's 24 hours a day. And mine was run uh, in, like, late fall. I think it was November in Canada. So it was, like, cold outside, and it was a mix of, like, rain and snow and fucking crazy. And I remember... Part of that actually helped me because I like hurt my knee on it. So one of my strengths going in strengths going in uh, was running. Um, I was a pretty good runner, and there's a lot of running that has to happen. Uh, but I hurt my knee, and I was like, now the first few days or whatever at the front of the runs and stuff, feeling pretty good about it. To like, red limping at the back of everything, and like a staff and a fucking ambulance right behind me, like just fucking quit number ten. Just like running in the dark, just quit. Why are you doing this? Look at everyone's up there. Do you think they want to work with somebody that's this fucking slow? I'm like, oh my god. Do you think they want to work with me? <laughs> yeah. No. I'm like, man, this was my strength, and I'm just trying to run. <laughs> but we ended up doing some stuff, like going through this like crazy ice cold river, and there's a bunch of cold kind of exposure stuff. And I ended up helping my knee a lot. So it was like that night, and then the next day I was like, oh, it's feeling a little bit better. And I started, it was like, I thought I was on my way out, and then I had this this little comeback. But that, that part was great. That's where I was happy that we were doing it in the cold in Canada. How many guys made it through? Uh, out of all the cereals, uh, I want to say we had, so it, it goes seven days selection, and then it goes um, to the assaulter course. If, if oh, you, if, shit. If you, okay. If you pass selection uh, and are deemed, you know, what they're looking for, you go on an assaulter course that's like 10 months. So from all the serials, I think we started the assaulter course at fuck, around 30, something like that. Let me rewind a little bit. 
So you, they've had, I'm just trying to understand everything. Yeah. So you're saying they have four, the year you tried out, they had maybe approximately four selections yeah. throughout the year. Yeah. Do they do they compress all these selections? Yeah, into... most of them are like back to back. It okay. was like all, I think in the fall, it was like serial one, two, three, four. Or... So there is one time of year where you have a shot to try out for JTF2. And if, yeah. you're, if you're not in that one month you window, gotta wait. Yeah. then you got to wait. Yeah. Okay, so four classes of 30, that's about what, 75% cut rate? Yeah, and you, you would see it like it, fucking hour one when it started. People were like, fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, uh, we laughed about it later. We're like, because the, to get there is such a pain in the ass process to begin with. Like, you got to do two years in the military. And I mean, not everybody joins just to do that, but like, and then the psych tests and the fucking physical tests and the training and like flying across the country to go. And then like the first fucking yeah. hour, people are like, nope, I'm get done. Me, get me out of here. <laughs> uh, it's like, okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's, yeah, 75% roughly are, are chopped there. And then, uh, I wish I remembered the numbers exactly. I've had a lot of concussions between <laughs> then and now. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, I think I think our course started at around 30. Okay. When it, was, when it was time to start the assaulter course. So you get through selection. Is there any kind of a, I mean, is there, what's, does the attitude change once you make it through selection and you're getting ready to go to assaulter's course or are you still? Yeah, you know? no, no, the attitude changes drastically. It becomes more now like a gentleman's course. Okay. Now they're, they're clear that like, this is still select, like this is now part two of selection. It's gonna be a 10 month course where you're learning fucking everything. But uh, there was a big attitude change. It was it was more like um, a lot of people just, they, they wanted to show you how to become a good assaulter. Um, and that was pr pretty constant throughout. There was some like, I'm an instructor, you're a candidate, like making that known. Uh, but for the most part, it was good, like a gentleman after that, gentleman's course after that. When you're going through the course, do you see, are you, do you have access to the operators that are over at the unit already? Uh, not really. Some guys had friends that were there and stuff and you get to have a chat with them or whatever. But we had just like the cadre of staff that we're running each package, that would be our, our access to the, you know, current assaulters in the unit. Okay. Yeah. What kind of skills are, how's it broken down? Uh, so selection's done um, in the fall and then SOAC starts, that's our special operations assaulter course, starts in Jan, when I did it, it started in January. So we go and we actually, uh, we came down south and did like a shooting package where they're just like, we're gonna teach you how to shoot these guns now. It was done at uh, like Blackwater. It was Blackwater at the time. Whatever. Oh, no shit. Yeah. You guys are coming down here. Yeah. Cause it was it's cold as fuck in January. Yeah. <laughs> like shooting pistol and loading mags. Uh, and it was just, I can't remember. I, I, I wanna say it was like a month or a month and a half of just shooting, like straight from the basics. Like this is the pistol. This is how you hold it. This is how you use it. Um, and just every day, shoot, 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 shoot. Was it um, internal instructors? Uh, like yeah. JTF2 guys teaching? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had like a training cadre that was... And they would get guys, so training, and they would bring guys from like some of the squadrons in to, to also teach. Um, so yeah, it was all like we were learning to be assaulters from assaulters. Rifle and pistol. Yeah, 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 rifle and pistol. What happens after that? So once you're done there, uh, and then we, we lost a few guys in that stuff, um, just like people you know, couldn't pick it up or safeties are always a big one because it's all looking forward to being in the CQB. So like if you can't pick up on weapon safety after some mm -hmm. chances, then it's like, because you, you know, yeah, you're, not you're gonna getting into it. some tight situations later. Um, but after that, we went to so shooting was done, and then it was uh, CQB, basic CQB. 
So for the audience, it's not military. CQB's close quarters battle. Yeah. That's that's entering houses, entering buildings with a team, and flowing through with weapons. That's right. Yeah. A lot of hostage rescue. Yeah. Capture kill type stuff. That's right. How was that for you, having never done that? <laughs> Man, it, I found it to be a lot of fun, but this at this part in the course, it was not so friendly, because <laughs> we have a training facility that's like a whole collection of different rooms, um, but there's a cat, there's no ceiling and there's a catwalk where the instructors are, are watching what you're doing and then just like fucking tearing you apart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a high stress part of the course for sure. You're trying to learn, take all the things you learn in the shooting package and now put it into like a very dynamic situation where once 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 you're going and flowing like guys are running and you're making shots and like you're like your dude's right there and you're shooting right there or like and what's beyond the target there's just so many things to process that it was like it was high stress. I, I enjoyed it um but i almost didn't make it through either i uh there was like it came down to like a final day in a final room um i loved being aggressive as fucking the cqb and sometimes it got me <laughs> a little more attention. Uh, it's, but yeah, I was like down to like, if I got another safety, I think it was going to be like, that's it for me. Um, but I still to this day after having done the course, gone through when did all the CQB and squadrons and all the other things, I still disagree completely with <laughs> like the safety that put me kind of on the bubble. Um, I think it was a bad call, but. Do you think maybe they put that on you just to add to the pressure, knowing that you only have one left? Um, I don't think so. Because uh, if they did, I think they may, would have done it to more people. Like, there was a couple of us, for sure, that were like, we just got to be careful on this run. <laughs> just yeah. be careful. Uh, I don't think it was done specifically. It was just I did it to myself. Uh, but, Roger that. Yeah. How long was that portion? Oh man, uh, I want to say it was just a couple months, maybe. So the shooting was a month. Yeah, maybe maybe two months. And again, these are all very. This is a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are all ish. So we're roughly what three to four months into selection. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. what do we have left? Uh, so after after you've shown that you can you can be safe, and and you're you're picking up on that stuff. It was still, we were mixing in stuff to it this time that was like fighting, uh, medical training. So it'd be like CQB in the morning, let's say, maybe a period of like TCCC medical training uh, and like fight class, CQB in the evening and then like another fight class in the evening. What kind of fight class are you guys doing? Uh, like a mixed martial arts. So this kind of, you're getting the basics of striking, boxing, kicking, um, and then grappling, uh, like some BJJ stuff, and then growing to incorporate like weapons and team, and, like more like in a CQB, like in a room environment, like you're coming in someone's hospital, but not necessarily armed, like not compliant. How do you take care of that guy? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so incorporating now you have a long gun and you have your gear and like that kind of stuff. So the, Built on first on the like the basics of just how to throw a punch, how to kick, all of these different things, some grappling, and then added in you know the guns you're gonna have or, or using a knife that you might have if you're in a hairy situation. When at what point do they start? Uh, how do I say? At what point do they start cross training? So at what point do they expect you to start busting out jujitsu? in a kill house or, yeah, so or that, striking in a kill that house. That was uh, the, the next portion. So it was like basic CQB and learning the fundamentals of fighting. And then an advanced CQB was like bigger targets, uh, off camp, things we've never seen, getting all like the, it, and it was more hostage rescue centric at this point. Uh, different types of infills, fast roping, rappelling, or like high speed vehicle approach or, you know, sneaky. Um, and then in those scenarios, you would have guys that were in the building. And this we switch from live fire to sim, simunition. Um, but there would be every fucking scenario you can think of yeah. they would put into these buildings and houses. 
um, and we would go, you know, everything from like uh, explosive entry to just like mechanical breaching and just the whole thing came together in that. And that's where you're, you're presented with situations where you're like, I assess that like, I would probably be, well, time because I'm on course, I'd probably be in trouble if I shoot this person. So I'm going to fight him. Um, and that's where it all kind of came together. Okay. So basically what they're doing is, it sounds like, if correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like CQB is the big, the mother load here. Yeah. And then they're adding in fighting, medical, air operations. You guys doing any diving? Uh, no, not on our, not on our basic assault. Navigation. Course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mount. That's the, oh, the nav, like navigation and all that stuff is we have a green phase that's uh, after advanced CQB. So after the, the, the kind of tackle, like the, the hostage rescue kind of domestic stuff, like, you know, you're wearing black and you're, you're doing domestic Canadian hostage rescue or kind of the scenarios. And then it goes oh, to no more. Oh, no shit. So you guys do domestic stuff? So that's a, so a mandate. Yeah, it's sort of like we're a mix. Because we have a domestic hostage rescue mandate, well, kind of globally, but like we will be what the government reaches for if something happens that like our police can't handle. So almost like your, uh, what's your, hurt, hurt your FBI, I think, have... HRT your, the, team. Your HRT, yeah, have like that domestic hostage rescue mandate here. Um, so we have that No shit. as well, yeah. I can't wait to dive into how this unit is broken down. I didn't, I had no idea you guys were uh, both domestic and foreign. Yeah. That's cool. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.